Well, it's become pretty apparent that the ice storm cometh. All the schools around here have closed. The majority of the churches have canceled worship for today and tonight. Uh, and those who haven't canceled are seriously considering it. Uh, it's just a bit too nasty, projected to be a bit too nasty. And frankly, I want to keep everybody in this congregation safe. And frankly, I want to stay safe myself as uh, traveling back and forth. So, no Ash Wednesday worship tonight. Now, this being Michigan, however, tomorrow is projected to be in the low 50s. So, uh, on Thursday, the uh, vocal and the bell choir rehearsals will be, uh, will happen at uh, 6 o'clock for the bell choir uh, and 7 o'clock for the vocal choir. And I think it's a wonderful opportunity for you to uh, step up and be part of the vocal and bell choirs. Uh, again, the rehearsals are uh, 6 and 7 uh, and uh, be part of it. Uh, worship and praise God as we uh, sing to God's praises through the gift of music. So um, take the opportunity to do that. Now, um, because uh, we're not having worship and with the imposition of ashes, I thought, well, I go ahead and, and prepare a little devotional uh, for this. That's why we're doing the video uh, instead. So I want to go ahead and read the first reading that was scheduled for tonight. It's from Joel, uh, I'm sorry, the gospel uh, from Isaiah, uh, the 58th chapter. And Isaiah reads, quote, Shout out, do not hold back, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me uh, they're of righteous judgments. They want God on their side. I mean, why do we fast and you do not see? Why humble ourselves but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day. You oppress all your workers. You fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, to bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin? And then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly." Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of you, the Lord shall be your rear guard. And then you shall call, the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help. And he will say, here I am. You know, I, just, I once knew a, uh, an insurance agent who, he would go to potential clients and he would say to them, he said, I had a dream about you last night. I dreamt that you died and you didn't have any insurance. Now, the amazing thing to me was that it worked. You made a pretty good living at it. You know, on Ash Wednesday, remember that uh, death is a fact of life. I mean, every morning I read my hometown newspaper, the Marion Star, and one of the first sections I go to, frankly, is the obituaries. You know, to, to see if there's anybody I remember in, in, that had died. You know, I think, it, I think it was George Burns, I'm not real sure, who said he begins his day looking at the obituaries, and if his name isn't in there, he'll get out of bed. But everybody knows, of course, all of us know, that one day our names will be there. You know, like it or not, as I said, the only thing certain in life are taxes and death. The difference is some people can cheat on their taxes, but you really can't ever cheat on death. But today is Ash Wednesday. Millions of people around the world, not in Southeast Michigan, but everywhere else, are gathering for worship. They, Many of them in the more liturgical traditions, they come forward to the front of the church. Uh, in many cases, they kneel before the pastor or the priest. 
They feel the touch of an ash-covered finger on their forehead and hear the ancient words from Scripture, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. One after another it comes. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Those are pretty strange words to us of modern sensibilities. They sound, they sound kind of fusty, irrelevant, almost medieval. Why should why should we remember our death when the word when the world cries to us life? We're urged to be positive, right? To think positive, to feel good about ourselves, to to reach for the stars, to be all you can be, as the old army slogan went. Even Jesus proclaimed that he came to, that we might have life and to have it abundantly. It's annoying to be reminded that someday it's all going to end. No, no, no. We say to ourselves, forget this dust and ashes stuff. Let's keep things in their place. You know, same, simple, safe, life now and while there's life, death later when you have to have death. That's why for all the millions who hear those ancient words today about being dust and returning to dust, millions more will just not go to church at all. But then we pick up the paper or we flip on the news and something sounds like a bro broken axle, right? In the midst of cheerful stories, there are always ones about wars and rumors of wars, murders, crimes of all types, drug battles, all of that. Remember the parable of the rich man who thought he had it made? Done so well, he could tear down his barns, build some bigger ones, think about early retirement, think about a life of ease. But then Jesus brought him up short. He said, fool, this, this night your soul is required of you. And the things you prepared, whose are they going to be? This is as simple as a gift. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Or as somebody else once said, death, death is something that happens while you're making other plans. Why does it have to happen? Well, that ancient story from the Garden of Eden makes no bones about it. In almost shockingly straightforward language, it says we brought it on ourselves. That Adam and Eve, we, we want to be God, right? We want to know what, are, what is good and what is evil and then act on those short-sighted, self-serving re revelations. We make ourselves out to be supermen. We, we decide that death is for our enemies and it's acceptable in defense of our political agenda or, or acceptable when we want to go to war. We decide that the proof, that the pursuit of illicit, illicit pleasures involve little or no risk. You know, you know, AIDS happens to those other people. Supermen. We think like God. It kind of sounds like the ancient myth of Prometheus. You, you've heard of Prometheus. You know, the ancient Greeks thought Prometheus as a hero because he was a champion of humanity. He was, he was a superman in many ways. It was Prometheus who came down from Olympus to teach us how to be better than the rest of the beasts. How to, he taught us how to build, how to use tools, how to use herbs for healing. He even introduced, introduced us to fire. Prometheus would have made us supermen. But the, in the process, he, uh, he, he provoked Zeus and Zeus's wrath. So Prometheus was bound with chains to a rock where he was, he was tortured by a vulture who tore out his liver every day. It grew back and tore it out and grew back and tore it out. Yeah, every morning this happened because Zeus would not be challenged. There would be no Superman, if you will. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. In, in its own way, the ancient Greek mythology told that to the ancients. And scripture tells us very plainly the same thing. Like Prometheus, we too are bound. 
The Lenten journey that begins with Ash Wednesday is a necessary reminder that we are not supermen and women, that we are dust. It would be terribly depressing if that were the only story, though, right? But it's not. You see, Lent only begins with ashes and dust. But the story goes on. Those Promethean chains that bind us are not our final destiny. Because on a drab and desolate hill one day, somebody loosed those chains. Not some Superman, but God in the flesh. Jesus, who is the Christ. That's something we're called to remember every time we gather together at his table of grace. And then, and then on Easter morning, a spark appeared in the dust that lit a fire that never, never will go out. Our gospel puts everything in perspective for us. It allows us to think about the unthinkable. The Lenten story that begins with Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Culminates at that glorious day of the resurrection on Easter Sunday. The story makes it clear to us that because of Jesus Christ our Lord, neither ashes nor dust are the last word. Always remember that. So, on this Ash Wednesday, I hope you will have a truly blessed day. And also, stay safe out there. Take care, and may God bless you all.